Hi, welcome back to YouTube. I'm back again for one more for another video. Um, today I've been to my second pre-release for the new set, um, Commander Legends, Baldur's Gate, and I thought it was worthwhile just having a chat about the deck I played today. Now, I didn't do as well as I did on Friday night, I'm going to be honest about it. Um, I got knocked out, we were playing, I played two four-man pods, and both of the pods I was the first person to get knocked out. So we're not going to talk about that too much. But the deck is still worth looking at, so I thought I'll go through it, do another quick video, show you what my thinking was, and then, as before, answer any questions. I have got a couple of questions that have been asked on the previous video I've put up um, from Friday night, so I will answer them in this stream as well, and I'll type a reply in a little while when I finish recording this. So, moving swiftly over, here's what we drafted today. Um, we got Bane, Lord of Darkness. Um, this is good. I like this card, and it says... As long as your life total is less than or equal to your or equal to half your starting life total, Bane Lord of Darkness has indestructible. So it's a one white, blue, and black for five two, which you can make indestructible. Notice it's also a god, so it does have some synergies with some of the other decks I play occasionally. But it has a really nice ability that says whenever another non-token creature you control dies, target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you may put a creature card with equal or lesser toughness from your hand onto the battlefield. Onto the battlefield. You don't need to cast it, don't need to do anything fancy with it. It just literally comes into play from your hand. Um, now, admittedly, it does mean you have to have cards that you can do that with and you're drawing stuff to do it. This deck didn't have a lot of draw in it. That was uh, one of the faults, and I think that's possibly where I went wrong. I'll show some of the other cards I had. Um, I did have a command tower. I had a gate that wasn't much good, to be honest. And then basically I had um, 10 islands and, no, 11 islands, six, six planes, um, five swabs plus the command tower and the other land I had. I think it's right, it might have been six, it might have been six, six no, six planes. Um, six planes, six swamps, and ten islands because of the blue stuff, which you can see over the back of here at the top on the right-hand side. As you can see, there's a lot of big casting cost stuff that you need double blue for. So that's why I went more heavy on blue. Um, the deck itself, this is it. I'm just going to take the commander out for a minute. I'm sorry the camera's wobbling. It takes a minute to refocus when I move anything. So um, I'm trying to solve it, but you'll just have to put with that wiggling for a minute. Um, as you can see, what I've done is I've got creatures up here. So we've got uh, these up here, down to here, creatures here, creature spells, and all the way through in the second half spells. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the piles up, and I'm just going to go through the cards, and hopefully you'll be able to see them, and it'll stop all the wobbling on the camera. So bear with me one second, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so what I've done is I'm going to go through all the creatures I drafted, and then I'm going to go through the spells I've got. So the first one we start with is Mold Folk. Um, it's a one on one black life link. Um, has an ability to sacrifice another creature or count artifact and put a plus one plus one counter on it. It was filler. I needed some early drops. I'm aware this deck didn't have many early drops. I wanted something to do on turn two. There was a creature anyway. There was some other turn two stuff, but I'll get to that in a minute. After that, we had Bone Caller Cleric. I love this card. It's one of the best cards I've seen so far in this set. Um, again, it's a two one for two mana, one and one black. But it has a really good ability. Um, three in a black, sacrifice the bone, call a cleric, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now you can only play it as a sorcery, which does slow it down a bit, so you've got to have it in turn, you know, but you can play it, and if you've got six mana, you can instantly sacrifice it and bring something back. I'm going to leave that to one side here, because there's one card I want to show you with it that comes up later on. Um, into the three drop creatures now. So we had Beckoning, Willow of the Wisp, um, two and a white, flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose an opponent. Creatures attacking the last chosen player get plus one, plus nothing. Yeah, it's a one three that flies. One thing I have noticed in this set, if you are drafting this set, there's not a lot of people, unless outside of the dragons, if you can get flyers, you're doing really well. There isn't any, really any way to block flyers. Um, unless you've got dragons. So it's really worthwhile having a look from my point of view at getting flyers where you can. It's worth it from my point of view. Obviously, if you disagree with me, feel free to comment below in the YouTube comments and tell me why I'm wrong. After that, um, we had the Kengu Artificer. Um, when Kengu Artificer enters the battlefield, put three plus one plus one counters on up to one target non-creature artifact. 
their artifact becomes a 0, zero homunculus artifact creature with flying. This works really well with some of the artifacts I'm going to be coming on to in a minute. Um, it does help. You do get some 3-3 three, three flyers. I didn't see it at all, but again, it's a card I'm excited about. It gives some help to some of the artifact decks that are coming around at the moment, um, especially if they get it on MTGO, but I'm not going into that today. <laughs> it's fun, basically. Um, Persuado Dragon Familiar, it was basically it was a cheap flyer. Um, but target creature with flying, you know, you can give creature with you can give a creature flying to the end of the turn for three mana. It's a two one flyer for three. It's a little bit behind where you'd want it to be, but again, it was another flying creature, and I was into flying creatures at this stage. Next up is this. Um, I've put it in the vehicle. I've put this is a vehicle. It's a good vehicle. Um, and basically it's Mighty Servant of Luke. Um, so it's an artifact vehicle, so you have to crew it and the crew cost is four, so just bear that in mind. But it's six six for three mana. Um, it's got ward of discard a card. So if anyone wants to try and kill it, they've got discard a card as well as cast a spell to do it with. But it has an interesting ability. When the mighty servant of Leku, let's go with that, becomes crewed for the first time each turn. If it was crewed by exactly two creatures, it gains. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards until the end of turn that ability stays in. It's crew fours instead. This is good. I played it once. It drew me four cards before it got killed as a creature. Um, it basically got blocked out by someone with a double strike. They'd got double strike somehow, so it died very quickly. It did kill the other creature, but it did die. Um, but it's a good card. The drawing cards is really nice, obviously, for obvious reasons. It gave me cards that I could then use over here with Bane when I got Bane onto the table. So from that point of view, it's good. I think this is going to be one of those cards we see turn up in a lot of Commander decks going forward at this time, um, whether it's in real life or MTGO, but I think we'll see a lot of these appearing shortly. Right. But I put it in here because I class it as a creature. Not anything else that you see. If I hold it up, you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Next one down was the Flaming Fist Officer. Um, two and a white for a 2 2. Whenever the creature leaves, you control, leaves the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, fine. Stuff dies. You had this in play, it got bigger. It's nothing spectacular. It's got no evasion unless I give it flying with the creature we saw earlier. But it was okay. It was fun. Um, Skating Hall's quite nice. Um, flying for 1-1 one, one for 3 mana. Really below that curve you want to be at. But it's got an ability that's quite useful. When Scouting Hawk enters the battlefield of an opponent, that's any opponents in your pod, not just, you know, just so count the manner that you've got, count the manner your opponents have got. Um, if an opponent controls more lands than you, search your library for a basic planes card and put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. It's good ramp. It got me out of a couple of binds a few in one of the games. The second game, I didn't have any white mana, but this came out and got me the mana I needed. So I had some white mana so I could cast Bane. So from that point of view, it's quite good. Is it competitive going forward? Maybe not. Is it going to be playing casual white decks? Yes, it is. So bear that in mind. It's around and it's out there. This was good. Um, Renari Merchant of Marbles. Three and two. We're up to the four casting cost creatures now. Legendary creature, Dragon Artificer. Um, you may cast dragon spells and artifact spells as though they had flash and choose a background. So if you have this as a commander, if you know the rules, backgrounds are these special legendary enchantments. There's a couple of them in this deck that I'll come to when we get down to them. But you know, as a second commander, so you know if you've not played it before, you could pick this and say pick a red background and you can build a blue red deck. Okay, just so we're clear. Um, this was nice because I did pick up quite a few dragons, as you'll see, all things that are dragons. So it did mean I could cast some of my creatures with flash abilities, which I quite enjoyed. But it's a 2-4. It's a possible build around in the future. Um, this was probably my most valuable creature of the day. Um, Lou, this was my pack one, pick one, along with... I can't remember what I picked now with it, but it wasn't... It's, oh, it's one of the cards I haven't played. It's a green card that I never really saw anything for, but I'll show that off in a little while. Um, Lulu Loyal Holyphant. Um, it's a flying creature. Uh, it's an elephant angel of all things. <laughs> I think someone was watching um, Dumbo when they made this card. But anyway, um, flying. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on each tapped creature you control, then untap them. Obviously, it's got the choose a background bit again. 
this is really good. If anything is going to make me want to build a mono white token sacrifice deck um, or something along those lines, it is this card. It's amazing. At one stage, I had this up to a 5 4 power and it was dominating the board until someone put a goad card on it, a goad enchantment on it, and then one of my other opponents killed me, and that was in the second pod. Um, the first pod, as soon as I played this, it got killed because people realised how good it was from the games on Friday night. But yeah, like this card. can see this going a long way. I can see decks being built around this in the future. Um, Bless Hippogriff is an adventure. It's one of the adventure creatures, which is quite nice to see them back in. Um, it's three and, two, uh, three and a white for a 2-3 flyer when it comes into play. Um, and whenever it's a creature and it attacks, target attacking creature without flying, gains flying to the end of It gives you a creature's evasion. It's okay. But the other side of it is it's got the adventure ability. It's one white, it's an instant, and it says target creature gains indestructible until the end of turn. It's good saving stuff. It saves your creatures. Eventually it comes into play and attacks and give one of your bigger creatures on the ground flying. Um, I was trying to get it in play to give Bane flying at one stage, but I died the turn before that all happened. Um, that was in the first game, so yeah. But it's got definite potential. Again, going forward, maybe not the competitive scene, but maybe the casual scene that we good. This is going to see lots of play. Um, it's a dragon wizard, so obviously, of course, I can play it as Flash if I want to. So it's a dragon. It's a three and a blue for a two, three, and it has a really good ability. Untap two other target permanents. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. Notice it says permanents. So if you've got this in some sort of blue green ramp deck or any blue deck this turns up in, you can untap two lands at a minimum. You can untap creatures, you can untap anything that hasn't got shroud that you control. It's amazing um, and it really helps me ramp my mana up today. Next one is um, a 1-4 for 4 mana. Not great stats you think, it flies, so that's okay. But when Anarako sneak enters the battlefield you take the initiative this is the main thing it took the initiative when it came to play i got the initiative if nothing else because we're still going through the undercity it went and got me basic land which i was really happy with a lot of the time and occasionally i'll be able to blink it in and blink it out with one of the other cards that's coming up in a minute um and it got me a little bit further down that i did off the back of this and this thing it's one of the reasons i left it here because this had a lot of synergies with what's going on in the deck did get through the whole of the Undercity at one stage in one of the games, which was really nice. But yeah, it's not bad. It's not great stats. But if you're playing, you know, if you're playing a dungeon deck, it's probably worth having a think about this at the least. Okay. Um, Val Candlekeep Research is another legendary creature for four mana for a two three. It's got vigilance, and it says on it, add an amount of mana of colorless mana. Equal to Val Candlekeep Researcher's Toughness. This mana cannot be spent to cast spells from your hand. You may wonder why this is in here. Can't use it to cast anything from a hand. But I put it in A, it was a 2 3 Vigilance, which I thought was quite good, and B is in my colour, and I was a few creatures short from what I drafted for this colour set. Um, and the other thing is, it can trigger any ability. So if you've got an ability on a creature, you can use the mana from that to do it. Um, if you sacrifice an artifact or do something along those lines, you can do the mana from that. And also, I can use the mana to do this. So, you know, there's a, if you remember on our little thing here, a black and a three. Yep, this will give me the three colorless from this, because it's three toughness. So, bear in mind, look for the little synergies. Okay, up to the five drops now. Um, don't think there's many of these. Uh, four and a white. It's a giant knight for 3-6, and it's got Vigilance, which is fine. Um, but when it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. This is the another initiative card I had. I never played it once in either of the two pods today. It just did not come out and did not happen for me today. Still, it's an interesting card if you're drafting. Right, up to the six jobs now. Dragon, Artifact, 4-4, four, four, 6 mana bit below the curve but it has got flying and flies are important in this format I've decided after today I lost with flyers decks by the way so yeah right Pegasus Griffin this is one of the reasons I was keeping some of the cards here adventure creature we'll hold it up because the text again a little bit small on here um, so it's got the adventure side of it blue and um, one and white 
instant, uh, rescue the foal. Exile target creature to control, then return that card to the battlefield under its own control. That's quite good. Um, go block something with a small creature, blink it out, comes back in instantly. Um, so that's fine, you get to keep your creature alive, nothing else associated with creature. But the second ability when you cast it for its six mana, because it's five and a white, flying. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, create a 1 1 white Pegasus creature token with flying. I was getting a lot of flyers at one stage because we had one of my opponents had a thing that gave us treasure. We took damage of it. It was one of the um, oh legendary enchantment things I've forgotten the name of that I've been talking about and I've forgotten already. Um, but yeah, I was getting some treasures or so sacking a treasure each turn for a mana to cast something. That also gave me a 1-1 one, one token. It's good. I can see this turning up in a lot of mono white decks, especially if you've got things like Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, um, Fable Passage, any of the sack lands, or anything you can sacrifice repeatedly in white, it's going to be good to get you those Pegasus tokens. Right. I'm just going to put all these three together because they're all exactly the same card. Part of my draft today was we got three dragons. Um, four and two blue for a three five flyer. And when it comes into play, you tap a target creature an opponent controls and you goad it. Now, I made up a couple of boo boos with this because I was, you know, because I had the legendary creature let me play dragons for flash. I was flashing one of the two of these in. What I should be doing is just playing these on my turn when I get them, looking for the biggest creature on the board and goad it if I can. Yeah, these are quite good. I had quite a lot of fun with these today, but they're just dragons apart from that. The ability is really good. Um, seven drop before we move on to the artifacts and things. Um, serpent Coast Serpent, Sea Coast Serpent. Um, it's got a capsizing wave ability, so one and a blue, instant adventure, return target creature its owner's hand, bounce something that's annoying, but for five and two blue, you get six, six swords, coast serpent, can't be blocked as long as you've cast a non-creature spell this turn. The rest of my pile is non-creature spells. This could have been unblockable a lot if I hadn't died in both games when I cast it, or had it in play as the case may be in one of them, so. But again, I think it's quite good fun. Again, it's a dragon, so I can flash it in, which, you know, off the back of that thing. So there's a lot of things you can flash in, so it's worth keeping an eye out for them. Right, moving on to the artifacts and spells. Um, Goggles on Night was any bit of equipment I played. Um, one in the blue. Um, equip cost is two. Whenever equip creature deals combat damage to a player, scry one, then draw a card. It helped me cycle through my deck, um, but it wasn't that great. Mindstone, you know... But this Mindstone, Marble Diamond, and Charcoal Diamond that's there. So the, I didn't get the blue one, unfortunately. These were quite good targets for the creature I showed earlier, where you can put some plus one, plus one counters on things and turn them into three, three flyers. So that's why they're in here. Plus they're ramped so I can get to the dragons a little bit faster. Onto the three drops. Here come the backgrounds. Um, there's a couple of backgrounds in here. This is the first one I put in. Um, you can play them in your main deck, they don't have to be in your command zone, so. Um, commander creatures you can you own have, whenever an artifact or creature you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent will loses one life. I talked about it in the other video, had one the other night, so I'm not going to repeat everything I said now, but it's still as good as it was the other night. Um, for a blue and two, you get Feywild Visitor, um, again it's a background. The commander creatures your own have, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one blue for every dragon creature token with flying. Yeah. Note it says whenever one or more non-token creatures you control. It doesn't have to be the commander. It can be any creature you control. As long as it's not a token one. And then you get a 1-1. One, one. So that's quite good. Um, minimus Containment is a repeat. As you know, it's a reprint. Um, Two and a blue, white, sorry, enchanted non-land permanent, it becomes a treasure. Um, it's one of the few removal spells I managed to pick up for this deck, hence why I'm showing it in here. This was quite interesting, it's a new take. Um, Decanter of Endless Water, you have no maximum hand size for three mana and add one mana of any colour. It fixed my colours, I was playing a three colour deck at the end, I need some fixing, so we went with this. Um, and that's the only reason this is really in the deck. So. There we go. Right, I did get two of these. 
Um, so, Lagos, all with the Dragon King. Um, two in a blue. Tap, add a blue. Whenever you spend this mana to cast a Dragon Creature spell, scry two. Yeah, good fun. I've played, used it a couple of times to scry stuff, and having two of them when they're not legendary really does help. This card is fixing Navigation Orb, um, three mana, and then sack it for two. I'm going to get a couple of basic land cards or gates and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Lantern of Revolting, uh, Revealing, sorry, not Revolting, wrong thing. Three mana again, tap it to add one mana of any colour, so that's quite good. And then it has the ability for four. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into battlefield tapped. If you don't put that card onto the battlefield, you may put it on the bottom of your library. Basically, I think it should say, if you don't put that card onto the battlefield, you may scry. Because that's basically what I was doing with it. It's basically a scry trigger. Um, why it's not called scry, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Wizards changed it around for, but it works. Um, I talked about this the other night. I was lucky enough to get another one today. Um, Astarian's Thirst. It did kill something for me. I did get to put some plus one, plus one counters on. It's a lot nicer today, because obviously Lord of Bane is five. So it was more counters, but yeah. Creature died soon afterwards, but no, it still works. It's still there, still a good card. The final one that I played today was Summon Undead. Four and a black, mill three cards, and then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yep, that's pretty good. That's pretty solid. Did I try and cast it? Yes. Did it get countered? Yes. Did I get upset? No, I just laughed a lot. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it worked. So. Again, it's another reanimated speller for black. So you can't complain about having all the extra reanimated spells kicking around. So just to finish this video off today, um, well, I just want to show you some of the other cards I picked up when I was drafting today. Um, we'll start with the backgrounds, and then we'll go through some of these, including the pre-release card that you've just seen at the top there. So um, Flaming Fist, I quite like this. Um, I, couldn't really fit, I couldn't really think of a good way of putting it in my deck. It might have been good with Bane since Bane's a 5-2 and could be indestructible and double strike would have been good. So I think this was an oversight on my part. It should have been played over one of the other ones. But as you can see, for two and a white, um, commander creatures you own have, whenever this creature attacks, it gains double strike until the end of turn. I can see a lot of these legendary enchantments um, going in the main decks of lots of decks that have partners in them, especially if they fit the colours. So keep an eye out for these because there's going to be a lot of these backgrounds kicking around over the next few weeks, I think, in real life. You never know, we may get some of them on MTGO, so you may see them on my stream as well. Likewise, um, Sinian of Halaster, Black and Earth Colourless, um, Commander Creature Own have. The first time you draw a card each turn, instead look at the top two cards for your library, put one into your graveyard and the other one back of your library and draw a card. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. That's pretty good filtering, if ever I saw it. Um, I'll leave the res for a minute. So the other one, the other uncommon commander I picked up, this was late in pack three and I just took it because there was nothing else there of any interest. Uh, Lausanne Dragon's Legacy, it's got the alternate art, which is quite nice. Um, three blue red flying for a 4-2 which is okay cope with that uh, but it says whenever you cast an adventure spell or a dragon spell the Lausanne blah 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 deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target that isn't a commander so if you got this in play and you say you dropped a, a four casting cost dragon for example you get to do four damage to someone as long as it's not a commander you can't hit another commander with it you can hit any of the other creatures you can hit any of your opponents because it's any target, um, but just not the commanders they may be playing. Next creature I picked up, again, it was late. I think it was in the same pack as um, Lausanne as this one. Eltrual Survivors, Trample, Myriad. So don't forget, you attack with this, you get copies of it, and they trigger as well. As long as there at all survivors is attacking, it gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of lands defending player controls. Pretty good. It's got Trample. It's got Myriad. Um, if you can give it haste, it's going to give someone a bloody nose very quickly. Okay. The last two I was really happy with. This one is Monster Manual. I like this card. This is going to be one of those cards that I'm going to best be trying to play as much as I can in all sorts of different decks. Um, three and a green for an artifact. Um, it's also an adventure. So two and a green for zoological study. Mill five cards. Then return a creature card milled this way to your hand. 
Yep, yeah, okay, got no problem with that. Look at the second ability, everybody. One and a green. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, what you need to look for if you're going to abuse this, I am going to be trying to abuse it as much as I can. Admittedly, it's named Monster Manual after the obviously the D&D book, which is really quite cool. Um, I'm going to be looking at things that say when creatures come into play, not when they're cast. Don't forget, cast triggers only go when they're cast, so things like Cascade, if I remember correctly, won't work. But things that say when XYZ enters the battlefield, do this, that will work because you're putting it onto the battlefield. This is a stupid card. I love it for Commander. It's going to see a lot of fun in some of my decks. The last thing I want to show is my, pre my pick card. Now, as you know, I said the other day, we all got these nice things. Woohoo! Um, and they come with a pre release card in them. My one was this, and if this doesn't see Commander play in all sorts of formats, I have no idea what will. Storm King's Thunder. X and three red. It's an instant. It's a mythic. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell X times. You may choose new targets for the copy. Just let that sink in for a minute. So, let's say I've got 12 mana in play, just for the sake of it, in a red deck. It's probably going to be a red-green deck where I've ramped or some variation thereof. Got 12 mana. Use 8 of it. 3 for the casting cost this and 8 for the X. I have one red left. Lightning Bolt. It's probably something better, but Lightning Bolt's the first thing that popped in my mind. That's 24 damage from Lightning Bolts going all over the place. I can target them wherever I want. I can kill creatures. I can probably finish off opponents at that stage. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. You know, if you really want to be narky about it, let's go back to the 12 mana. Um, use 3. Um... Put six into this, so you've got six things. Three mana stone rain. Let's block the six most annoying lands in play. This is just ridiculous. And I am going to be so much hoping this comes to MTGO very quickly. And I can build a deck around it and do it on the stream. This thing is crazy. Absolutely crazy. And yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I love this. This is great. Okay. So that was today's. Like I said, I didn't do particularly well in the pods, but the draft was fun. I've shown off some of the key cards I got, and it's been quite good fun. So, I do have a question, which I've got on the other monitors, so I'm going to look away from the camera. I know I've been looking away from the camera a lot, so sorry. Um, what card were you hoping to draft from the set? Which card from what you drafted are you most excited by? Um, this is going back to my deck from the other night. And... I did have it piled up here somewhere, but I can't find what I've done with it. Um, okay, so what I was really hoping for, like everyone else, I think, is probably Elminster. That would have been the card I really would have liked to have seen. Um, the Planeswalker from the new set. And it looks like this. So this is the card I was most excited about. This is just Elminster. Um, Blue, three blue and white. Uh, whenever you scry the next turn, whenever you sh whenever you scry the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn, cost X less to cast, where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. Um, plus two, draw a card, then scry two. So all your instants of sorcery are going to cost two or less, two less from their casting cost because of his ability. And minus three, exile top card of your library, create a number of one one blue fairy dragon creature tokens with flying equal to that card's mana value. Um, and Elminster can be your commander. That's what I was really looking to hope to draft and what I really want to play. So I'm still hoping I'll be able to pick one up at some stage. So that'll be good. The other ones I'm excited by are also Mahadi, the one I had for my commander the other night. I still think there's a lot of work to do on this deck. Um, and I'm looking forward to trying that work out and going forward with it. I think it's going to be a good card and that's the next thing I'm going to build around, even though it's an uncommon commander. Um, although if I can pick up Prosper, I will be honest, this is going straight into the Prosper deck. But I'll still going to get Prosper from the previous Forgotten Realms sec. And the other card I'm excited by is still Lozan. I think this is going to be one of the cards I'm going to really enjoy building around in the future. Um, just the fact that I can cast an adventure spell. And there's blue, there's blue and red adventure spells that are quite good. Um, even going back to the old sets and any dragon spells, there's a lot of good black and there's a lot of good, sorry, blue and red dragons out there. That I'm really excited to cast with this, so I'm hoping 
they'll be the two that I pick up with mostly shortly and they'll be the decks I'll be building. Um, because MTGO isn't looking doing this, what I will probably do at some stage is build these um, and do a video about them, but there won't be any gameplay or anything else. But what I'll do is I'll load the decks into MTG Goldfish and put a link up and show you the decks on a stream like this. So um, what I'll say for now is thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here. Um, take care. Any comments you want to make, leave in the video below, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget, I stream MTGO Tuesdays and Thursday evenings, and then usually on a Sunday afternoon, obviously I'm recording this this Sunday afternoon, I'm doing a later stream tonight, um, but this is Sunday, obviously you should probably see this on Monday, you probably missed the Sunday stream, but anyway, if you have missed the Sunday stream, jump in, follow the link below into um, Twitch, and come and click on it, and you can re-watch the video from there. But in the meantime, for now, thank you very much, and take care, and I will see you all soon, hopefully on the stream on the next YouTube video. Bye-bye.